Hey there, Tenno. I'm Shadow Scythe, and I'm gonna be doing something a little different with this video. Instead of me like picking some in like a handful of the individual changes, I'm gonna be talking about the most recent update as a whole because there were a lot of changes, and the vast majority of them I will be going over in retrospect on their own over the next several weeks just because there were a lot of weapon changes that I still need to mess around with the weapons themselves some of the warframe changes that I need to look at a little more closely Ember actually being one of them hence why I'm playing her right now and there's just all around a massive amount of shit that actually needs to be done. But let's start off with the big thing with this update. Riven Transmutation was brought was brought in as a thing. However, to get the Riven Transmuter, you have to beat one of the two new Eidolons that came out, which were the Gauntlist and the Hydralist. Now, the way that either one of these Eidolons work, if you guys haven't had the chance to uh, fight them yourselves yet, is there is a shrine on the plains now in the middle of the big lake on the fossilized uh, Eidolon corpse jutting out of the water. Like... It's around that on the stone itself. And it was a shrine that the... Do I um, that the Austrians now? had built... If you're looking for Maru's bazaar, lucky to these Eidolons in hopes bundle. to bring them good fortune <laughs> or some spirit. shit Let's like go. that. I don't remember exactly how it's worded in the update itself. Or in the patch notes. But in order to summon these, you have to first go out and kill the Terrorist. After which, I believe you need the, uh, just the regular Eidolon shard in order to summon the Gauntlist. And okay, I, you, know the you may yeah. need the, the Brilliant Eidolon shard in order to summon the Hydralist. I'm not 100% sure how you actually go about summoning these. Because I haven't had the chance to actually fight them myself, and I haven't actually seen them get summoned either. So that's something that I will have to do a little bit more digging into, just because I am not 100% certain. Whoa. Okay then. There were about... A hundred different weapon uh, rebalances that went live. Um, boosting status chance, boosting crit chance, tweaking base damage. There were a few weapons that did receive a little bit more so than that, like the uh, Pindaro. In one sense, it did get a very slight nerf. However, at the same time, it was buffed. Because the only thing that they did was they dropped the base damage a little bit. But other than that, they raised everything else. That's one of... The, also, what you guys just saw was one of the changes with Ember. But going back to what I was saying with other weapons... And then there's a lot of people saying that the uh, Zugie or the Zuj, however you decide to pronounce it, got a little bit of a nerf. The only thing actually showing up in the patch notes themselves is that they changed the mastery rank requirement from 0 to 10. Don't look now, however, after dogs, looking at the stats on it by. myself, I do kind of have to agree, it does seem like there was a little bit of a damage reduction to it. And then the another weapon that got a treatment pretty much identical to the Pindaro is the, um, the Daiku. 
the Daikyu did slightly have its base damage reduced, but it had its, uh, but it had other stats buffed. I do have the list up on one of my second screens, so when I get a chance to pause and scroll down to the weapon changes themselves, I will talk a little bit more on that. As far as, like, all of the Warframe changes, a good chunk of the Warframes all had, like, balance passes that were done. Um, they changed Ash's Bladestorm again, so the only way Ash actually participates in the killing himself is he has to press his teleport, which... Teleporting to an enemy marked by Bladestorm actually does not cost energy. Which, that's a plus side. Um, Banshee, did, Banshee received a nerf to her uh, Resonating Quake augment. So that... What happens is you press 4, you hit the ground once, it is a single pulse that only applies damage once, the cl and the damage is maximized near the center. Ember received a few changes, actually. Fireball can be charged up for additional damage. Uh, if you charge it up, at all upon impact it will leave behind a napalm like fire trap much like the grenier napalms that we also love to fucking get hit with their fire damage through a wall fire blast pretty much got a treatment similar to giving it stats from the fireball from the fireball augment any of you that are familiar how the fireball augment worked is if you cast fireball on an ally what it would do is it would pretty much uh, it would give any ally hit with it fire damage on their weapon for I don't remember the exact duration because I did never used any augments like that And I don't remember if it was to a specific weapon type, or if that just applied to their melee weapon. I'd have to look it up to be specific. But the way Fire Blast, but the change to Fire Blast is if you cast it, and an ally decides to shoot through your Fire Blast, it will now add heat damage to the weapons that fire through it. And then there's a, and then the big change to Ember to her world on fire. That's where a lot of the controversy with Ember lies with this update. There's a lot of people who are not happy with the change. And at the same time, there's a lot of people who Ember is the primary Warframe that they play. And they absolutely love the change. Pretty much the way that the world on fire change is going to affect your play style is are you the type of person that just builds stupid power strength, presses a button and forgets about everything, or are you the type of person that has more of a caster type play style where you're spent focusing more on comboing your abilities? So, what do you say? Will you help him out? I mean, I had a Firequake CC, low power strength, max efficiency CC build, primarily for sorties, just to keep everything within my effective power range kind of CC'd. So, the changes that they made the world on fire, I can figure something else out for that. So it's not a real big heartbreaker to me, because under normal circumstances, I usually ran an extended duration flash accelerant build. 
So that's all I was doing was focusing on comboing abilities. So it's no big deal to me at all. Um, there's a lot of controversy with Chroma over the changes to his Vex armor. The Spectral Scream buff is dropping life support model all over the place. I mean it's not terrible, but at the same time it's not great. Yes, you have full range of movement with Spectral Scream now. And it does get buffed by your um Vex armor. However, they changed Vex armor to scale like other abilities of that type. So what it does is it will do the uh, it does the base times the multiplier, then it factors in the mods. So there's a lot of people who aren't happy about that because the way that it works is you still have the crazy ass damage. However, always collect our it doesn't so it's not solely on you. The days of the solo chroma terrorist one shots are dead. Now, I have not used her new world on fire yet, and honestly, the power Okay, I'm seeing the power drain scaling. It does accelerate fairly quickly, so it's pretty much set up for you to press for get to get yourself out of a tight jam and then deactivate it, which, in all honesty, I'm fine with that. Um, going back to what I was saying with Chroma, other than all of that, there really weren't too many changes, the, because the way that his Vex armor works now is, it's now an aura that affects your allies, so the damage increase that you get benefits the entire team, not just yourself. I should probably pop a life support capsule. And then as I pretty much just showed with the changes to uh, Ember's World on Fire, what they're doing is they're pretty much going through all of their Warframes and making some balance passes to do away with that press 4 to... Uh, that whole press four to win playstyle that a lot of players have fallen into habit. Because when the Warframes came out and the powers that were used, or and the powers that had those effects, that was not the direction that DE had in mind for them when they came out. And they pretty much admitted this with the dev workshop when they were originally talking about all these changes. So, yeah, I do have to agree that even though a lot of people aren't happy with, like, the changes to Resonating Quake, Bladestorm, World on Fire, I don't condone them for the changes because they're wanting to... They're tr basically trying to encourage more active gameplay from players. And as a game developer, that's all that you can really ask for. And unfortunately, the frames mentioned, the aforementioned frames and uh, Mesa back in the day, that that's pretty much how it worked. Was they all had that press four to win playstyle. Now, if you're just doing a regular. Uh, power strength and efficiency build for Soundquake, that Soundquake on its own was left alone. It's just the augment that got the uh, basic nerf. 
But there's a lot of people who are actually saying that it seems a little bit more like a buff as well. I would haven't actually messed around with Banshee yet to give my word as to whether it feels like a nerf or a buff. You've located the VIP. Time to go to work. See, that's pretty much the whole intention. I pressed 4 to kill the Lynx, deactivated it. Now, Atlas and Zephyr are two that I definitely wanted to talk about, because they, the two of them received probably the largest amount of changes, with Atlas getting some new mechanics to him, and Zephyr getting a slight rework. Zephyr's first and second ability have been combined, where what happens is, instead of basically double tapping her first ability like you used to, where it would jump you into the air and then launch you in the direction that you were facing, you can either press it to, you can press and hold to charge it up to put yourself into the air and hover for with the duration pretty much depending on how long you charged for, and I believe your effective duration through your mods. Then you press one again and launch yourself in the effective direction that you're facing, unless you are facing straight down. If you are facing straight down when you recast her first ability, that will trigger Dive Bomb. Zephyr's new second ability, Air Burst, fires basically three projectiles that if hit, that each do damage on their own, or if coupled with her fourth ability, the tornadoes hit by these will, sli will expand slightly in size and increase their damage. Tailwind was left untouched. And her tornadoes did have a little bit of a scaling repass, just to make them scale a little bit better, and the closest one to you will follow your... can be driven with your reticule. Now, this was definitely something that Zephyr needed, and it's definitely a push in the right direction. There is still a little bit of an issue with her, just because she is... She does not have the damage that she is fully capable of yet. She was definitely taken in the right direction. However, she does need a little bit of an extra push. Atlas has a bunch of new Petrify mechanics, with Petrify, instead of it being channeled, has been changed to basically a quick one-off that will flash Petrify enemies that you can then landslide into almost several times over. You should think about finding a Killing petrified enemies Stands with weapons or with landslide will, they will drop a uh, boulder or pebble or whatever. I don't remember what they actually decided to call it, which if you have, have any missing health, it will heal you. If you are at max health when you pick this up, it will stack on the bonus armor. You can petrify his bulwark to reinforce it and increase the velocity if you decide to use it as or use its secondary projectile state. And summoning rumblers will instantly petrify enemies immediately in the area of their summon. And casting petrify on them will heal them. Now, here's the thing. This was definitely a change Atlas needed. It makes him a little bit more fun to use. You think about finding a captain. However, there is one major downside, and that is the bonus armor you get from Petrify, or from these boulders, or from his rubble mechanic in general. Regardless of your power duration, it ticks down ridiculously fast. 
I have witnessed this firsthand with an extended duration build for his rumblers themselves. So that needs that does need a slight tweak to where it either scales better with duration or they give it just a higher fixed amount before it starts to decay. However, with the fact that this update just came out on Friday, it pretty much these next two weeks, it's watch week for D to see how all of the changes that they made are taking effect in the game and anything that they may need to do to rebalance the changes to make them fit in a little bit better. Because that's a lot of content changes that they made. Um, Volt did receive a slight change to remove his damage cap, basically. Um, however, I actually was playing with a Volt that I knew how to build him a few days ago, and it, he said that it seemed like, uh, the whole discharge and everything was a little bit shorter. Which... Discharge, remove the damage cap, increase damage output. The damage and stun duration are halved for enemies further away. This is how this is affected by your mods. Mirage had a slight tweak that was snuck in for her um, Hall of Mirrors and her Eclipse. To where they now have the exact same duration, making it easier to couple the abilities together, and making it easier for to maintain that upkeep. Eclipse has also been made recastable, so when that's about to expire, you can recast it to refresh the duration, and then just recast Hall of Mirrors when it expires. It'd be nice if they gave Hall of Mirrors the recastable thing as well to refresh the duration because then you could pretty much keep those up indefinitely as long as you have energy and be able to actively maintain the damage increase and damage reduction. Hydroid had a pass made to his undertow so that any enemies caught in his undertow when you decide to move with Tidal Surge move with you. And Mag and Mag Prime actually received a lovely little change that I was really excited for. Um, first of all, the regular Mag energy pool has been increased to 125. Mag Prime has been increased to 175. The shards created with Polarize now scale with your power strength, as well as the percentage of damage done to the specific enemy that they came off of. As many of you know, if any of you were running a shield polarized build with the augment, before she, uh, the way it worked before was shield polarize. If you were to spam it, you could just give yourself a ridiculous amount of overshields. The way that it works now is that Augment has been changed so that enemy weapons that were hit by Shield Polarize will be jammed for 4 seconds with the mod at max rank. Robotic enemies hit will be disabled for the same duration. Crush has received a change so that each stage of Crush will emit a Shield Heal. This will restore shields to nearby allies per damage wave, as you know it is a three-stage ability. And the animation has been slightly sped up, and if at any point during that animation, if your shields are maxed or hit max, then any excess damage is immediately converted into an overshield. Which was why they had to change the augment. And then Rhino has had the has had 
the amount of impulse caused by iron shrapnel reduced because I guess the issue was that uh, they had it pretty much had a large ragdolling effect that could essentially jettison enemies out of the map so if you had like set kill numbers and whatnot you could effectively eject them from the map and not get kill credit because you didn't actually kill them So, yeah, there is a re that's pretty much it for the Warframe changes themselves. I'm going to pull, what I'll probably end up doing is, over the next few days, I'll do another video focusing primarily on the weapon changes. But, all in all, I'm actually enjoying the update a good bit. I'd love to hear from you guys what you you all think of the update if you're willing to leave that in the comments section below um but other than that if you guys like this video for whatever reason hit that like button and subscribe and be sure to follow me on uh twitter for all things related to twitch youtube and any sort of irl dirt that could be causing a delay or a cancellation if you guys would love to see any additional content when i'm not doing videos I do periodically stream from time to time on Twitch, usually on my off days from my job. However, at the present moment, I'm a little hesitant to stream until I see all of the changes that are going on with the Twitch end user license agreement because they were making some changes to the community guidelines with that. And, uh, if you didn't like this video, then feel free to leave a thumbs down. However, before you completely write off my channel, check out some of the other stuff that I've made in the past. Something there might catch, you, catch your fancy. This video was a little bit more rambly and drawn out than some of the others. Because there was a lot of stuff that I was talking about. But, with all that said and done... Until next time, Tano, stick to the shadows.